Happy Friday, and happy Poetry Friday. It's time to look at another poem on Friday during my lunch. And today, we are looking at Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Ozymandias. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in a desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed, and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. It's a delightful little poem about pride and about the downfall of pride. Here we have this great king Ozymandias who apparently built this great kingdom, and it was huge and powerful, and he felt like he was stronger than anyone else on earth, and all that's left are a few broken pieces of rock and a little bit of his statue. I mean, really, it's just the legs of his statue with his face lying there in the sand as well. And his statement has kind of a double meaning. He says, Look on my works, ye mighty in despair. Which was originally intended, presumably, for the mighty and powerful of the world to look at Ozymandias and say, Oh, we'll never be as powerful as Ozymandias. But now, it's sort of a call for all those who think they're great to look at Ozymandias and realize that no matter how great you think you are, you're not going to last forever. It's also interesting that this poem sort of explores the idea of telling a story. We don't hear the story from Ozymandias' perspective. In fact, we don't even hear it from the person who saw the statue of Ozymandias. We hear it from a speaker who heard it from a traveler who saw the statue of Ozymandias. We're very distant and disconnected from this story. Also, notice how Shelley points out uh, the, the way you're able to sort of read that face. The sculptor well knew the passions of Ozymandias. So in a lot of ways, we don't get close to Ozymandias, but we hear things from a distance. We see him second and third hand. Maybe that underscores the fact that here, the greatest of kings who everyone should have heard of is really not even heard of directly, but just very, very indirectly. Or maybe it also underscores something of the importance of art, the way that the poetry and the sculpture and the art pass on a message. Maybe not the original intended message, but it's still a powerful message. Anyway, thanks for joining me. You can click up here to watch the previous episode, click here to watch the next episode, or click down here to subscribe. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next week on Poetry Friday, or in one of my other videos, I'm sure. Tastes like honey grams.